Glass Reflection Review Number 26, Claymore. Originally released March 11, 2011. Today I have chosen to acknowledge a common fact, and that fact is, for the most part, men are easy to please. It's true, and this goes for anime as well. Any anime that follows what I call the three Bs has pretty much a 100% chance of hooking any average male into their audience. And those three Bs are battles, blades, and babes. Let's look at some examples. Let's see, we got uh, a berserk. The entire show is pretty much just one giant battle, usually fought with swords and Casca's a babe. Black Lagoon, you got epic gunfights, you have Revy, who is one hell of a babe, and for blades, well, Revy's pistols are known as sword cutlasses, and since a cutlass is a type of blade, that's good enough for me. So, what does this have to do with today? Well, we have a show about a group of female warriors who fight demons with giant swords. Try and guess whether or not I like this show. Claymore is a historic fantasy anime produced by Madhouse, whose beautiful art resume includes things like the previously mentioned Black Lagoon, uh, Death Note, and hell back in the 90s they did Trigun. So I'm just kind of uh, layering on the icing to this awesome cake here. Give me a minute. The show itself takes place in an alternate universe from our own on a world that resembles medieval Europe in a fantasy setting. Now, usually this means the appearance of either werewolves or vampires, but no, instead we have Yoma, which is basically just a combination of the two in the way. Yoma are demonic creatures who can pass off as normal humans until they decide to bulk themselves out and eat people. And that's basically the gist of them. The plot starts out in random medieval town A, where the villagers are afraid because they believe that a yoma is hiding in their midst, slowly devouring the townspeople at night. So they decide to do the only thing that they believe they can do. Since a yoma can disguise itself as any member of the village that it had devoured, and the people have no method of detecting it, they decide to hire a claymore to come to the town and kill the yoma for them. A claymore, lovingly named after the swords they wield, refers to a group of female warriors created by a mysterious group known only as the Organization, who have been infused with the flesh and blood of Yoma in an attempt to create a hybrid-like species between the two of them that are capable of defeating the Yoma. Though feared by the normal humans due to their mixed blood, claymores are the only ones capable of detecting a Yoma's life force or Yoki as the show refers to it as, because they themselves use Yoki to give them super strength and fighting abilities straight out of Dragon Ball Z. Claire is the Claymore who was sent to the village to defeat the Yoma. She also happens to be our main protagonist. Her job is basically to go around from town to town eliminating Yoma as she is assigned by the organization. Claire is like if you were to cross D from Vampire Hunter D and Guts from Berserk. And she follows the philosophy of actions speak louder than words because her actual dialogue is actually fairly small for a main character. Not that this is a bad thing because where she's lacking in the dialogue department, she makes up for in the kicking everyone's ass all the time department, usually in a beautifully gory manner. You goddamn witch! Now, based on this alone, would you not agree that Claymore is awesome and a benchmark by which all other action anime should be judged? Of course you do! You know why? Because there is absolutely no way that they could possibly screw this uh, up. Hey, hold on! Wait for me! F 
What'd I do? I was only walking behind you. Meet Rocky, the Jar Jar Binks of the show. Sadly enough, in the first episode, Claire saves Rocky from the very same Yoma that she was hired to kill because he was disguised as Rocky's brother. And from that point on, since apparently he has absolutely nowhere else to go, he attaches to Claire like bloody crazy glue. He's the type of annoying sidekick that always seems to get in the way and basically has absolutely no purpose until like the end of the show where he either dies or pretty much just screws with the alignment of the universe. So forgetting that for a moment, and trust me, it's hard. The show is basically a monster of the bye week spiced up with occasional episodes where we follow a completely different Claymore named Teresa, which was so godsend because Raki wasn't there. And finally, we have the struggle of Claire as she tries to discover the meaning behind the Claymores while fighting the inner struggles with her Yoma half. And that's all well and awesome. The art for the show is gorgeous, I can't dispute that. As for the animation, it's great about 80% of the time. That's because this is a heavily action-oriented show, and as such, they tend to cheat at the animation at times. But that's okay, because when they really needed to make it look good, it looks good. It's not like they had infinitely deep pockets like Bones did for Soul Eater or IG for Moi Vito. And all things considered, it's above average, which is good. The opening is well, um, the opening. But the ending, though, is brilliant, and it's actually one of my favorite endings just because of the music alone. Now, a lot of people don't like the actual animation part of it because you have this giant claymore on the left-hand side where the credits usually go, but I actually rather like that because then the credits don't cover up the actual art of the ending, which is wonderful. With the sub and dub, you really can go either way. However, with claymore, I found that your hardware can actually make a very big choice on which one you want to do. That's because the English dub for Claymore is in only 5.1 surround, and the sub is only in stereo. Now, I know Claymore isn't the first people to do this. Actually, most of Funimation stuff that comes out right now has that on it. But this happens to be the first time that I actually noticed, and I'm like three cards short of Exodia in the stereo department having only a set of headphones. So obviously, I went the sub route, so then I wasn't missing anything. But other people might not. You might have five speakers. Go ahead. But even if you do, you might want to do sub anyway because it's easier to ignore Raki if you don't know what he's saying. And no, I will not let up on him. He bloody well ruined the show. All in all though, despite the show's flaws, I liked Claymore. I really do. Its major advantage is its style, which is wonderful. Now unfortunately with the annoyance of Raki and the fact that the ending happens to deviate from the manga, it might leave you unfulfilled, also because it kind of doesn't end. It's one of those read the manga type endings or the wait for season two type endings, which we just so love, don't we? But regardless, I still recommend it to anyone that's a fan of the genre because it's still good. Now, for the boring bits, Claymore is released by Funimation. Extras include commentaries, trailers, interviews with the original Japanese staff, and best of all, for fans of the dub, you have the original cast auditions and I'd love to see this show up on more DVD sets. I really, really would. It's also available on Blu-ray, making it even more beautiful than it already is. Just remember to ignore Raggy, because he is a stupid little twat. Stay frosty, everyone, and I'll see you next week.